Hello everyone and I'm hoping you're having a wonderful day. I am Abriel Brummel and today I have two friends with me, Miriam and Naomi Hamstra. And we are going to be talking about the communications, a much needed topic in our society. Hi there, my name is Miriam and it's a pleasure to be with you today. I am a sophomore in college and I also work full time in an agritourism business. So I have a little bit of experience communicating on a daily basis. This is my sister, Naomi. I'm Naomi. Uh, I work at the same agritourism business as well. Um, I'm a freshman in college this year. Um, I'm excited to be with you all. So today we're going to be talking about what's communications and things that we need in communications. Right, yeah. Communication is a very important topic. And I think one that goes quickly alongside of it is conversation. Making mm -hmm. conversation with people is important, but what's one of the reasons why you think communication is important, Abriel? I think it just makes people look at you and you feel like you're actually loved. Right. You feel more like you're actually with each other. Mm -hmm. you're, it's not like a one ping pal conversation where it's like you asked a question and you answer it and they don't ask a question back, right? A conversation is to flow into one another. Like we, me and my mom were looking at a page and we were writing down how our conversation went, how we were first talking about family and then that led on to pictures and then into books and then into piano. And it was just crazy how conversation can change from one topic to another yeah. without you not even noticing. Right. What about you, Naomi? What do you think conversation is and why is it important? I think conversation is um, interacting with one another. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just talking, um, but it's also, um, yeah, the interacting with people. It can be written words um, when you send letters to people, right? You want your letters to be a good conversation. Um, I think it's important to talk with others and also have different ways of communicating as well. I think we need communications in everyday life, right? We need to be able to talk to our parents. Right. Like, they're really close right. and you need to be able to talk to a stranger as if you've known them your whole life because that will actually give them a feeling of closeness an actual you know feeling that these people actually care about right. right it's actually something that gives you a boost and you feel like oh i want to be friends with these right. people right how do you think that is done um is there certain things that should be kept in mind when someone wants to have a good conversation that I think just going? asking good questions like yeah, that's a good point how is your family doing yeah. or what have you been doing for work or how are your grandchildren it depends on the age too you right. can kind of sort out who's who like okay these people are going to have grandchildren so I could ask about that and that kid's yeah. going to be in right. school so I can't ask right. about grandchildren right, right? right. So there's certain things that you have to kind of cross out when you're talking yeah. to certain people, right. which I think is very important because you don't want to be asking silly questions to people, right? right. And so how does that help you in while you're working every day? Yeah, I that's mean, a good question. How does that help you, Naomi? I think communication is important in the workforce, um, especially at my job where I um, give tours about our modern pig farm. Um, I think um, it's very important that I communicate to the guests well. Um, so that I can give our message on um, that way they can ask questions about our farm um, but I can also ask questions to the guests as well so I can know um, what background they come from. Uh, some come from the city um, and some come from our uh, farm life themselves uh, so it's very important to have that good conversation. Mm -hmm. I agree just just being able to talk to a person right? Right. Right. and looking them in an eye right. right? Yeah. How does that help you in your work too, Miriam? Yeah, one of the things that I do is I sell tickets to people. Uh, one of the first things that you have to do is you have to kind of sell the product, the, the ticket, and that involves understanding what they need, how much they know about the business, how much they don't know, uh, how we can make that purchase for them smoother. And then there's other times where I give speeches uh, that are about 30 minutes to an hour long at one time, and that would involve me speaking for large periods of time, as well as seeking to know whether the audience is engaged, uh, whether they're needing questions uh, answered or anything like that. So for example, I'm uh, going to alter my speeches based on the age, uh, the background, um, and if it's, say for example, a group of fifth graders, 
I'm not going to be talking so much about the in-depth, uh, difficult concepts of farming as if a farmer of 30 years comes and says, what's different about this farm than mine? And then I'm going to introduce the new concept, concepts of farming in that way. Uh, so it's important to gauge who you're talking to. So like when you have like a whole variety, let's say you have a 50-year-old farmer and you have a class of second grade. How do you engage, and then you have a group of uh, also fifth right. graders. So how do you engage all these different age levels? Yeah, that's a good question. How do I engage all of them at the same time? And that's a lot of eye contact, like what you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. I'm constantly looking down at my audience, looking whether they're engaged, and I'm kind of figuring out and playing quickly in my head. I'm saying one word, but I'm quickly thinking in my brain, what's going to happen next? What am I going to say next? And sometimes... I'm just going to have to engage one audience at a time. Uh, so I can't alter my speech so much if I need to answer a question in depth about farming. Sometimes I'm going to answer that question is to the best of my ability and uh, hope that the rest of the group is able to somehow pick up on that. So can you like say something very complicated to that aged farmer and then say something and like kind of like like make it a little simpler for the second graders right. so they can understand it just as well as the aged farmer. Yeah, that's a good good point because for example, say I have a, a three-year-old uh, who hasn't uh, gained a concept of weight yet. If I'm talking about the weight of a pig, I'm gonna more likely say the pig weighs about three pounds. And um, for you younger children, that's about the size of a toaster. And so to a farmer, they're gonna be able to concept or any of us who are older are gonna be able to grasp the concept of what three pounds uh, feels like, whereas maybe a two or a three year old might need that extra visual to help them mm -hmm. understand. Uh, but That's a good just, idea. Yeah. Just to give them something that kind of bases off of the same thing, so it's not like, oh, you have to re say right. it, but it's you're just adding on to to make it right. So, Naomi, what has working at the farm taught you? How does it teach you to communicate better? Oh, I've learned a lot. Even from day one, I remember just growing a lot from day one I've gone a lot in communication. Um, I think one of the biggest things I've learned about um, good conversations um, is how much preparation you have. Um, if I'm talking, I'm giving a tour about our modern pig farm, um, I need to be well prepared in the topic of pig farming. Um, otherwise I'm not going to have a good conversation with the guests who come through. Um, I've also learned um, a lot about communicating with different types of people. Um, also with people who are happy with our customer service. Um, some people are not. Um, so I've learned how to relate to people um, who need something um, or who are just have a question about how our farm works. Uh, you raise an interesting point that I would love to get both of your thoughts on. How does communication work in conflict? How does communication help us solve conflict? I think when just looking at people in the eye and with your face expressions, when you're asking something to for, forgive you, you're not going to have this sassy look right. on your face. You're going to have a sorrowful look. And when you're saying something joyful to a bridesmaid, you're not going to have a frown on right. your face, right? You have to have your face expressions and you don't want to look sad right. and you don't want to. So I think when you're doing that, you need to have the right motives, right? right. What about I think you? just um, communicating with the person. Um, if someone comes in and complains about their cup of coffee, uh, I'm not going to say, oh, wow, well, sorry about that and then do nothing about it. Uh, I want to ask um, what don't they like about the coffee so I can better get them a better cup, um, or I can direct them to someone who can help their questions. Um, but even just communicating with a person, I think um, it can be difficult. Um, in conflict, I think our temptation is to um, just not talk at all and avoid the conflict. Um, but I think just communicating um, is a great start to dealing with conflict. And talking of kind of complex stuff, when you're evangelizing, that's another thing. You want to be able to sympathize with the person, right? right? Yeah. You want to be able to, okay, I'm sorry that your mother died. Can I do anything for you? Can I give you a booklet? Can I, you come over for tea sometime? Do you want to have a talk? Do you just like kind of go into the people and ask them if they really would like to have anything? to really help them engage to you and right. like, you know, like have a lasting friendship. And that, that also helps when you're, okay, somebody has a disagreement with you, when you're evangelizing like with evolution, 
then you're not right on the spot. Let's say you're at evangelizing center. You don't really want to start having a debate right there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Can you want to come over for a cup of tea or do you want to go to a coffee shop? Do you want to do something there and mm -hmm. we can have some time and talk, mm -hmm. right? You want to have connect with the person and you want to have it so you're not showing the other people like you're in this open room and you have desks and you're sitting with people not that you're like right you want me having a smile on your face and being yeah. saying nice words yeah i think communication um to be a good communicator i think you have to be willing to give of your time um, and your resources right so if you're addressing the person whose mom just passed away um, not only do you have to have a conversation with them, um, but a good communicator is going to be willing to give up their time later, right? So we need to mm -hmm. invite them over or give them what they need. So. Yeah, and like, you know, going over the Bible mm -hmm. with passages that would help them. Right. And I want to ask you a question. What sparks a good conversation for you? What, like, gives you the motive to start talking to the person? When you're talking to a person you've never seen, and they know how to communicate, and they're really, like, they're asking you questions. How do you spark that conversation even more? I like to see where they come from. Um, I think asking a question about um, where they're from, um, or asking about them, um, making sure that they feel like they're being listened to, um, that someone is taking interest in them. Um, I know when someone communicates with me, when they ask questions about me, or just see how I'm doing, um, I definitely feel like the person wants to talk to me, mm -hmm. and that really sparks a good conversation. What's the best way for you to spark a conversation and start it and flourish in it? Right, I think it's finding what the person needs. For example, some people are going to be very easy to talk to, whereas uh, some people are not. Maybe they're mm -hmm. not good communicators in the sense that they don't know how to look people in the eye. Uh, sometimes it involves maybe intentionally looking uh, into their eye, maybe moving your head around until you can get that eye contact going. Other times it's asking them questions and sometimes it's just giving information. Uh, so if a person doesn't want to ask you questions, sometimes if you really want to get that conversation going with them, the best way is to just kind of talk and maybe uh, think about things that they're interested in. Uh, for example, if a person's interested in sports, say maybe I hear that you're very good at soccer. Oh, what's your favorite soccer team or mention something that you've learned about mm -hmm. soccer or that you know about soccer or something along those lines. Like lots of school kids, they talk about school and when you're a homeschooler, sometimes they don't know what you're doing and maybe you haven't started school. So they have a, like, they're not sure what they should talk about to you right. and so you have to help them along with that. Okay. What I mean is fine because it right. helps you learn how to be a good <laughs> communicator yourself. And I find when you're having a not so good conversation, it's like a ping pong ball, right. it hits the table. There's a drop point where it just kind of stops and then you have to start it off mm -hmm. again, right? And also then when you're having a good conversation, it's just always back and forth, right? It's just waving, mm -hmm. right? It's like a branch. It just it goes back and forth. You're like, okay, what have you been doing today? And that, you know, that leads on to a book you've right. been reading and you start talking about yeah. books and then a picture you see yeah. and then you're talking about pictures and then yeah. about family. And so it's so cool how a tree is mm -hmm. almost like a conversation. It's got the trunk and it just mm -hmm. branches off. I knew of a family one time, I don't remember exactly who it was, but one of the things that they would do is go on the way to someone's house for dinner, for example. They would talk amongst themselves. What can we learn about this person, for example? What's uh, the mom doing? Is she working? Is she staying at home? Where does the dad work? Just to learn information about the person and their family so that when you arrive there, you're not surprised when Billy's now in college or, or anything like that. You kind of know what's going on and can ask them those questions. You're not like, oh! He's already in college. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. You you want to, oh, wow, that's, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. Um, where did he go to college? What right. year is he in? You know. Yeah. And then that gets a conversation going right there. Yeah. I think making good observations, too, about people, especially with people that you're talking to that you've never met before. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of um, military veterans come through, and they'll be wearing their, you know, Army veteran hat or their Navy veteran um, shirt. And to just thank them for their service is a great way to start. Mm -hmm. um, just bringing up something that means a lot to them. Uh, because if they're wearing that shirt, right, it probably means means a lot to them. Mm -hmm. um, I've had 
a man come in before, um, and he just was not easy to talk to. I just don't think he was happy about being there. Um, but I was walking around with my cleaning supplies, and I saw his um, hat and shirt, um, and I said, well, thank you, sir, for your service. And right there, he just, his whole um, demeanor just kind of changed. He had a smile on his face, mm -hmm. and I felt like then maybe we could actually talk. Yeah. Um, so I think just making good observations about people um, that you don't know is yeah. a great way to start a conversation, mm -hmm. too. Definitely. Just, just that little couple simple right. words yep. right. sparked, just sparked his whole day, right? right. And made him, you know, get a smile on right. his face, right? right? It might have been hard where he, you know, he right. was working, but that still, right. it's, it's, it's and there's someone cared about him. As Christians, we believe that it's very important that we communicate with each other. So I'm interested in hearing from you. Why is it important that we as Christians develop communication, develop a good a conversation skills? Because uh, we all know that it's important to communicate, but why is it important as a Christian that we know how to communicate? I think first and foremost, it shows love to other people. Um, mm -hmm. If we show interest in other people, um, it shows that we're not thinking about ourselves. Um, God's Word wants us to think of others for ourselves, right? And so I think just talking to someone and s seeing what they need um, is a great way to show love. Also, if we don't communicate with people, we don't find out if they're hurting or if they have a need that could be addressed. Um, if maybe they lost um, a family member and they're having a hard time making meals. I think a conversation shows love to people, um, especially in the people of the church. Um, I think if we don't have conversations with people, um, we'll never get to know people. Mm -hmm. um, and if we never get to know people, um, then we never know what they need or what they're like even. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a person in the church who has a need. Um, if we never communicate with that person, mm -hmm. um, we'll never be able to be that person who can help mm -hmm. meet that. Um, so that's why I think communication shows love. Um, it's a way that Communication needs to start before we, we can give of our time and of our services. So that's why I think communication is really important for the church. Yeah, I think it helps us when we're talking to somebody to feel their needs, right? right when they might not know Christ. Mm -hmm. Then you're trying to you know start from the beginning right. and talk to them simply. How and what is Jesus? Right. Who is he? Right. Mm -hmm and how he's a deity and how, right? There's many things that you need to explain as simply as possible, right. but they're very, very, right, unsimple. So you need to be trying to get them to understand, to have patience. And in communications, I think patience is very much a virtue. Right. To be able to have patience just to wait, right in case they're like thinking, like when they're thinking, okay, I asked them a question, how old is Johnny Joe? And they're thinking, because they can't remember, not to just start on a whole different conversation. Right. To have patience with them, and to smile and not like laugh at them, because mm -hmm. they're not doing something. But just to have a smile on your face and to be patient. Right, it reminds me of the verse, Abriel, that you mentioned about uh, always having a good response and good communication to help those who don't know Christ brings to my attention. Uh, 1 Peter 3 uh, it says, verse 15 says, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Uh, so sometimes we have something to say, but it's not always fitting or it's not the right way to say it. Uh, so one of the things that we grew up saying is, it may be true, but it doesn't mean you had to say it, or the way that you said it was not kind. Uh, so especially in evangelizing, or with others uh, some also called apologetics, it's important that we show respect and gentleness, establish a relationship with other people before we go gung-ho talking about uh, what's important to us. And although it should, salvation is very important, it needs to be talked about, it's also important that we gain the trust and respect mm -hmm. of others. I think so. And I think as a church family, we need to know good questions to ask. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think, Naomi? What questions do you think? Just name a list of questions that you think are good to ask. I think definitely ask how the person is doing. Mm -hmm. um, you could also talk about the sermon that was preached on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, I think oftentimes in um, communication, we don't, let mm -hmm. our conversations be very um, full or rich. We just kind of talk about the same things. 
Uh, so mm-hmm. every sermon is going to be different, right? So mm-hmm. we want to hear what they've learned, and then we can also give our um, share of what we've learned too. Um, so I think that's a good question to ask. Um, ask them how their week was, what they did during the week. Uh, you don't always just want to ask questions that um, are answered with yes um, or no, um, but um, prompts them to include speak. more. To speak, right. right. I think like what you were saying is to like be with one another and to ask them questions. Right. It's, it's so good to be asked questions. Right. Like when I ask you, how right. are you doing? It feels good when right. you ask me, how am I doing? Because, right. well, what if I am not doing so good? Right. What if I am sick? A lot of times people don't say that to right. me. But, oh, yeah, I'm good. Yep, I'm good. Yep, I'm good. Or maybe not so good today, right? right. But they never say, oh, I'm bad, right? right. They right. always try to lift the other person's spirits up, right. which I think we need to be more truthful to each other. Right. I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also talking about talking about sermons, I think... I would love to hear in the bottom of church people talking about the sermon. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I have not heard that very many times. Yeah. Not very many. <laughs> Which is quite I think we need to spur those conversations more. Right. right. I agree. It's important that we as Christians build one another up. And although talking about the weather or any other variety of conversation is important and it's good, it's also important that we edify one another in the faith that we have and that we spur one another on to good works and, and to holiness as well. And talking about the sermon is one way. Um, sometimes it's good to ask how we can be praying for them, if we can help them in any way. Oftentimes when I uh, interact with people, <clears throat> instead of saying, uh, for example, if someone's hurting, instead of just asking how they're doing, uh, to ask if, and to say, if you need anything, just let me know. And I'll be there. And I found that that's a great way to bridge uh, communication, to make communication go beyond just a conversation that you had, but towards actually doing things for other people. So in conclusion, we've had a great discussion about communication. And communication is very important. And sometimes it can also be hard. It can be hard to develop these new uh, qualities, these new traits. Uh, but I want to read a verse to you. It's from Galatians, one of my favorite verses. That's Galatians 6. 6, 9, and 10, and it says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So it's important that we establish good communication so that we can love and do good to those who are in the household of Jesus Christ. That's why I think good questions make good conversations, and good conversations make what we are talking about. I hope you all were encouraged by our conversation today. Um, It is very important that good communicating um, is speaking well to other people, asking good questions, um, but also being a very good listener too. I hope, I'm so thankful that you and Naomi and Miriam could both join me today as we talked about communications together and I'm thankful that you guys have joined us too. Have a great day.